Deadly Camp. I checked that out from the Made in Hong Kong set, Volume 1. I've seen the other two movies now. This is the third. And I basically binged this set. And next I'm going to binge through more of the special features. But for now, let's talk about The Deadly Camp. Okay, so my initial impression while I was watching this movie, especially compared to the other two that I had just watched, um, initially it was in some ways maybe my least favorite of the three. I think maybe it still is. There are aspects of this, though, that I uh, enjoy more than those two movies, too. So it's hard to say. But there's, if I will say, if you really are annoyed by over-the-top bad dubbing or just iffy um, voiceover, sometimes this feels like an like a questionably dubbed like cartoon in, in spots. So that could get to you (laughs) and it's not, it's not dubbed in English. So it's just the dubbing for the native language, which is probably like Cantonese. If you crossed over Texas Chainsaw Massacre with a Jason movie. So Friday the 13th with Jason in it on an Island. (laughs) And you got the movie. I mean, it's pretty, it's a slasher, a teen slasher on an island movie, basically. There are some little differences, and there's some sort of fun stuff and some humor, but it's pretty straightforward, and it goes some places, too. Uh, some pretty, uh, you know, this goes for all three of the movies, but this one in particular, in a couple ways, if you're easily offended, there's, there, or even if you're just, You don't even have to be easily offended. There's just some potentially offensive uh, stuff in here, (laughs) definitely, to to be expected in this, you know, quote-unquote category, even though this isn't, I don't think this movie's technically a Category 3, but it brushes up against that line. Um, Just be forewarned. A lot of this comes from the fact that the, the killer in this movie has a son who is mentally challenged and everything you could imagine that would go along with that relative to trying to help his son out in the girls department and uh, the way this character is received by the other characters in the movie. I mean, I think it's, it's for me, it's perfectly, it makes sense that it's this way in the movie, but uh, a lot of people aren't going to like it, but I did have fun for the most part, watching it. It got a little tedi- more tedious towards the end than the other two movies did for me in the set. But it is interesting to see this take. And there's a lot... There are some attempts at artistry here and some slow motion. Actually, in the previous, in the Erotic Nightmare, there's some a good slow motion scene that's really good. Here, they're, they're playing with slow motion and sound a little bit in an unexpected way. So... There's some stuff in here that makes it worth the watch, I think. And uh, as a whole, at least for the just the movies in the set, I, I, I like this set and I will definitely uh, be getting volume two. I'm subscribed, so I'm getting it anyway if it comes out this year. But it's the kind of thing, I, if I wasn't subscribed, I would probably pick up the sets anyway because I like seeing this kind of stuff. Uh, I like seeing movies like this that, that you probably just would have never seen back in the day unless you were really paying attention or connected to international markets in some way so the deadly camp still enjoyed it i like the other two movies better and as of right now i still think i prefer the demon's baby next video related to this will be i'm going to watch through the special features and the commentaries i might try to do i've never done this before but like a hundred percent special like uh i'm gonna watch all the extra content and just review the set as a whole so that'll take me a little bit of time but once it's ready it'll be here like and subscribe thanks for watching Mm